I'm Donny Anderson, um, farming sheep here up in the hills, up past Talla. We're farming here for generations and still carrying on the same way. Uh, we, you can see the dogs working there. We need dogs to manage the sheep on the hills and um, that's what we do and this is just part of everyday work. Well, Donny, you've got three great dogs there. What, what are their names? Thanks, Rosalind. Um, the one in the middle is Bob and Jess is the one, stay there. Jess is the one behind and Toss is the one on the left. Are they a family group? Jess, stay there, stay there. When I say their names, they want to go. Yeah. She's the mother of Toss, or she's the mother of Bob and she's the other lad's aunt. Ah, so okay. Toss's right. mother is Jess's sister. They bring the sheep in from the fields for us there, up from off the hills. Um, are they born with that skill? Or is it something you have to train them in? They actually, um, it's in them to do work. And as I say, if it's not in them, you can't put it into them. So we just work with what they have, because that's their natural instinct. And that's why they've been bred for years to do that, to work with sheep and work with cattle. So we have to work with them and when they do what, they're, what they want to do, then we work and give them the commands that we want them to do then. But they basically want to do it themselves yeah. from the start. You've been training sheepdogs all your life? Um, I got the first one when I was going to national school. So I'm trying to do a bit since that. And I don't know how much better I've got at it. I remember you telling me that you only use one syllable in their name. That's yes. not to, oh, that's so that they're not confused, is it? The dog will understand so many commands that they'll pick up the first bit that comes out. So if you have a double barreled name or a long winded name, like by the time you get to the second part of it, he's probably gone anyway. And, and you just have to say their name and they're up and they're gone. Well, that's the way I work them because yeah. I say each one's name and that's how, because I have them all on the same command. So yeah. I'd like to be able to do another, speak another language that I could actually speak to one of them in, in Irish or something like that. But I can hardly remember the English, so I, <laughs> trying to remember is the, is the job. So if you had different commands on the different dogs, yeah. it would be easier. Yeah. But um, one man was judging a trial one day and I was hunting two bitches in a doubles, what they call a doubles, but just two dogs working together. And the judge said it was the most entertaining and hunter he ever saw because I was working the two of them with the same commands, but just when I'd say one's name, she'd work and the um, other one wouldn't. Yeah. How uh, old are they, do you think, before they really had it or are some dogs really born with an innate skill? Well, I'd say they're probably born with it, but just, yeah. We kind of don't usually bring them till we know they're able to mind themselves and be able to do a bit because you could give them a bad habit or sometimes if you had a small pup and a sheep hit one, it could put them off for life maybe. So we just wait till they're able to defend themselves and you usually know what they're going to do. Like, you know, not every dog makes it, but you just hope that they will. Uh, as you can see, we keep ducks and hens and geese here. So the dogs work them just the same as they work the sheep. And most dogs will work fowl just the same as they will with sheep and sometimes it's probably easier to train the dogs on fowl but part of it is I bring the hens in at night so I need the dogs to do that in case the fox is going to come and get them. I'm shearing here today with the hand shears or blade shears as it's called in the in the shearing world and um, this is probably the oldest way of shearing sheep and it's the hand shears, but most of the sheep are done now by electric or an engine machine anyway. So this shears is, um, the carbon footprint is very low on it, as you can see. And I've been known to do a bit of hair cutting with it as well. And I still do a bit of shearing at shows and that. I'm doing the same thing here now as what my grandfather and my great grandfather did. So as you can see, the hills here are, and they're, they are the way they are because that's the way they've been managed for years. And that's what people seem to come, like to come to see. I'm rolling the fleece here now, the same as we would have always done. Uh, the wool is not rolled up anymore because you don't get any extra for rolling it now. We throw it in what we call loose. And I'm making the band here to hold the fleece together. And it's just a pity that the wool is such a valuable product, but there's not um, much value placed on it now. Like we're only getting probably 15 cent a kilo for this fleece. And there's probably about a kilo and a half off that sheep there. Yeah, what I'm doing here in the Glenis Mall Valley is probably what my grandfather and great grandfather and their fathers before them did. And at that time, they were probably speaking Irish here in the last Irish speaking part of Dublin. So hopefully, it'll be carried on for another while.